Hey guys, it's Billy here, and welcome to my garage. Today is July the 8th, 2011, which means we are 22 days away from the launch of Byway Motorcycle 7, Pirates of the Arctic Circle. Um, I've been doing these Prudhoe Bay Diaries. This is the third installment. Today we're going to be showing you the KLR, which is located right off camera right there. And I want to show you all the modifications that I've done to the bike um, to get it ready and prepared for the Dalton Highway. So without further ado, I introduce you to the KLR and her Alaska configuration. Hey guys, it's Billy here. I wanted to take this opportunity and show you the new ride. This is it. It's a 2007 Kawasaki KLR650. Well, here she is, guys. The 2007 KLR650 in her Alaska ready form. Well, not completely ready. We got a couple of small things to do, but in traditional byway of motorcycle fashion, I'll probably wait till the last three or four days to do them. So instead of like holding out the video till then, I thought I'd show you in her 95% complete state and I'd go over some of the little things that we've done since you saw her last. So uh, let's get started. The bag system we've got on the tail here, we've got my Moto Fizz bag, which I've had since 2000. And four, I love this bag. I can't say enough good things about it. Um, if you're interested in getting one, uh, go to aerostitch.com. I paid about $129 for this bag, but that was many, many years ago. I think they're about up 160 now, but it's the best piece of motorcycling luggage I've ever seen, never come across, but it's the MotoFizz bag. On the side here, these are just your standard dry bags. These are used uh, for boating and hiking and canoeing and stuff like that, and they they're really, really good at keeping out the water. So I bought these in particular because they are obviously bright yellow, so it gives a little bit more visibility to the bike. Black and yellow, black and yellow, black and yellow. Anyway, enough of that. But <laughs> as I got really distracted and got really stupid, these are gonna be used. One of them has my tents, the other one has my sleeping bag in it, and uh, just a little accessory to the overall moto phase. And I'm gonna remove it so they're out of the way so I can show you the other stuff. So on the side here, we have my Pelican hard bags. These are Pelican 1550 bags. I custom made, mated these to um, SW Motec luggage racks that were built for the bike. Fortunately, the instructions for these guys are in German with only a couple um, insignificant pictures, so I'm gonna have to wing this. I'm not gonna do a tutorial about it because obviously I don't know what's going on. So we got our beer, we got our uh, all the equipment, so we're gonna try to, to knock this out. And I just basically took a Dremel and a drill and a little bit of bolts and creativity and made these in my kitchen. I made a video earlier on how I did it, but I made some modifications. Now mind you, a lot of people suggested really good things um, that I should modify these bags with, and I took it to heart, but to tell you the truth, some of the things I had planned on doing anyway, I just rushed the video to production, so I just kind of slap dashed the thing together with what I had. And so on the side here, we've got just a little master lock for, for added security. We'll get this guy out of the way and open it up here and show you this. On the inside here, we've mounted fender washers to give it a little bit more surface area. Now, Pelican bags are tough as hell. A lot of guys commented that, yeah, they had tried to do this 20 years ago, blah, blah, blah. And they probably didn't use Pelican cases because Pelican cases are um, extremely tough. I could have gotten away with the way they were situated just commuting, but the chances of me dropping the bike are pretty high. So I figured I'd uh, reinforce it just a little bit. So we've got these, and they're pretty big. They're two inch fender washers. And on the side here, we've built a latch stay to uh, keep weight off of the, uh, the hinges. And the, this latch stay is made from just a wire mesh that you would hang a, a mirror up in your house. So it's a <laughs> pretty cool, I think. And it, it keeps, the, keeps the thing from going less than 90 degrees. Uh, one question I got asked was how he's going to protect the bags from the exhaust. I had plenty of clearance at about two, two and a half inches. The exhaust itself has a little bit of a shield on it. I wasn't really too worried about it. I rode the bike about 100 miles with the bags on. I didn't have any kind of incident. But when I got home, I smelled something. It smelled like it was burning. I looked at the bag. Nothing was wrong with it. 
So I don't know if it was actually the paint, just the powder coating curing on the racks itself, or maybe, you know, the bag. Uh, you know, it just didn't like the heat, so it made me nervous, made me uncomfortable, even though there was no visual damage to the bag. So what I did was I bought this. It's a Kevlar um, sheet, and this is used actually to wrap a starter for a stock car. And it's the same stuff if you've ever seen firemen that have silver pants. They go into a burning building and save it save babies and stuff and they've got the silver pants. This is made out of the same stuff, but it's used. So basically I lined the inside with this Kevlar and I've put another four or 500 miles on the bike and haven't had a single incident regarding um, heat uh, to the bag. So that's how we did that. So on the back side, you see we have this crazy tube. Now I got this idea, it was suggested to me by Rebel Yell 91 He got it off of ADV Rider, KLR.net one of those um, forums where a bunch of guys get together and offer suggestions. And it's the operator's manual tube for agricultural equipment. So you put this on the side of a tractor or a um, combine or something and put the, the, the manual to that piece of machinery in the thing. So it's just this big tube. What I'm using this particular one for, as we can open it up, and I'll show you, is I've got auxiliary fuel bottles. Whoa. Don't worry about that, that's pretty tough. But these are MSR um, one liter fuel bottles and they'll give me a little bit of auxiliary fuel. And in case you guys are wor uh, worried about me um, running out of gas, I'm also gonna take probably a two gallon um, fuel uh, tank up there. I'm just gonna you know, bungee net it to the bike just for the Dalton only. And then I'll just have these for uh, you know, just total, total emergency. But I've got two of them mounted and on the top here, I've got another one mounted uh, onto the back rack here, and this one is gonna hold all my tire tools. It'll keep my inner tube, my pump, and uh, my uh, tire irons, and everything I need to, to swap out uh, an inner tube repair tire, and that's what I'm gonna use this one for. Now, a lot of loggers like to hide their license plate. It's just one of those things, but I wanna show you guys mine. This is either really cool or really dorky. You guys let me know. On the tank, we have the Wolfman Explorer tank bag. As you can see, it's curved all weird, like the shape of the tank, and so it'll be really good tank bag. This thing was freaking expensive as hell. It kind of pisses me off because it's, I mean, it's a nice bag, but for as expensive as it was and as small as it is, it's not really that good of a deal. But yeah, there it is, the Wolfman uh, Explorer. We have a full wraparound handlebar guards. I had these service ones on there that were to protect my hands from bushes and trees and stuff, but they didn't actually protect the levers, which is what we want these for. As you can see, the levers all nice and safe inside there. It originally had this big, giant, bulbous handguard that, I mean, it looked like a jockstrap cup. It looked retarded, so I just said, screw that. I didn't even install it. I just went with this smaller spoiler on there, but uh, they're made by Tusk. I don't know really anything about them, but uh, they should keep, uh, keep the levers securely attached to the motorcycle uh, if and when this guy falls. And here onto the body you see that I have an SW Motec crash guard. I ha was on the fence, I was debating between the SW Motec and the Happy Trails guard and a lot of people like the Happy Trails guard for the newer KLR, the 08 newer model, but uh, for this particular model, the 07 and older, the uh, the, the tubes are just really, really small and kind of frail looking. So I went with the SW Motex, a lot more meaty, and so this should protect the, the bike in case of a fall. Here you can see that we have a belly pan. I took the plastic one off, just tossed it in the trash, and this is a big, meaty, I think it's a 3 8 inch aluminum, uh, just a this thing's heavy and it's just thick as hell. I actually had to cut it on the other side to modify it to fit uh, with the crash guards, but I'll show you that in a second. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the belly pan. Here on the front fender, you can see we've got auxiliary lights. These are just some high intensity beams. They're just little spotlights. I haven't actually wired these up. This is one of those things that I haven't gotten to yet. I've got all the wiring, the switching system. I just have to, uh, to uh, get it ready to go. The funny part is, is where we're going, it's gonna be 23 hours of daylight. And so I don't need auxiliary lighting, but I figure if anything, it'll make me a little bit more visible coming at 
uh, trucks and stuff, and so I thought, you know, why not? They were cheap, they, was e they were easy to install, at least I hope, at least to put them on the fender. I haven't actually wired them yet, so we'll see how that goes. So anyway, there's my uh, auxiliary lighting. And one of the things that I've heard about the Dalton is that you can't rent a car and take it on the Dalton because the giant rocks from the gravel will just pummel and destroy a car. So to keep my headlight protected, I just put this rock guard. Now this thing I bought off eBay. I bought two of them for $8 and I'm giving the other one to Tracy, but it's just a, uh, it's a rock guard off a 1987 Jeep Wrangler. It seemed to fit pretty well. I just basically drilled holes in the fairing and bolted her eye up. So that's Kalar goodness at its finest, a $4 rock guard to uh, keep, keep the big uh, pieces of gravel from chipping my headlight. One more thing that we're still waiting for, we're gonna wire this up when we do the lights, is this guy. As you can see, it's a USB port, five volt. It goes from 12 to five volt. And I realized I was just gonna put a normal cigarette lighter style adapter, but I realized my GPS, my cell phone, and two of my cameras all charge off of this type of power outlet. So I thought, what the hell? This is kinda of cool. It's kinda of, kind of more modern, I think, than the standard cigarette lighter adapter. So. Um, I'm going to mount this guy up um, somewhere in the dash here and uh, yeah, then I'll have some power. Speaking of electronics, we've got our Jarman GPS. I'm still having some troubles loading the maps onto it, but we'll get that. But uh, we got that mounted with a ram mount to the handlebars so that we'll have a GPS goodness. This is a perfect example of how dumb I am sometimes. I bought this, which is a Moose Racing Shifter. Now, I was away from home, and I found this on the internet, and I bought it because it folds in. So I thought the chances of me breaking my shifter would be diminished by buying this and installing it. And then when I got it in the mail, got it, and I installed it on the bike, I looked at my stock one, and it folds in too. So I didn't even need it at all. But <laughs> uh, I've got an extra shifter, so that's pretty cool. Just in case this thing does fail and does break. I kind of like the black. It's a little bit more stealthy, but I really didn't need it. But it was kind of fun because I, my eight-year-old son actually installed this for me. So he had a good time um, actually working on dad's bike. So either way, it's cool. It's cool. Uh, as you can see here, right here, is underneath the skid plate, you can see where I had to cut it a little bit to, to make it... Uh, fit around the because it actually flared out too much and it wouldn't fit next to the crash guards. So that's it. So that's it, guys. That's my KLR 650 and her Alaska configuration. So, you have any questions? You know where to leave me comments and I'll respond the best of my ability. So, I will catch you later and I will see you on the road.